Look at all the color that is on the Pardalis Pardalis as opposed to the Babcockeye. You can really see a difference, can't you guys? Hey, what's going on everyone? Ken in here and I'm hanging out with my leopard tortoises. Uh, these guys are beautiful species that you may know a little bit about. And if you don't, hang around because we are gonna learn all about the leopard tortoise and I'm gonna tell you why these particular ones that I have are special to me. So stick around. All right, so I love leopard tortoises. Uh, one of the most beautiful and popular pet tortoises in the world. These guys come from uh, sub-Saharan Africa and they are inhabitants of grasslands. So they are a grassland species specialist. We have a male right here and a female here. Males, of course, are gonna have a long tail, concave plastron. And um, all right there, the females are gonna have a flat plastron and short tail. Now you'll notice this species here, they come from uh, drier areas, but they do get rain. Here in Florida, oh, mine have a little bit of what's called scud. It's a very superficial fungus uh, that gets on the shell, and that's just because we get a lot more rain uh, than they might, I don't know necessarily that they're useful, used to, but definitely uh, here in Florida. Look at this one's teetering a little bit. But the scud can be found in wild tortoises as well. And what we do here in Florida, since these are a dry, loving species what you have to do when you live in high humidity areas with these tortoises is you have to do things that are going to mitigate the problem of too much water number one if you guys notice these tortoises are on a slope and I don't have a lot of vegetation to kind of hold in any of the moisture I kind of allow it to just run off there's rocks mixed with sandy soil so this that does not hold a lot of humidity and water uh also it's got full sun uh during the winter and during the summer and these guys have been with me for a long time now my buddy scotty cramner brought me a few of these and then of course uh our friend callie had donated a few and uh before we leave today's video i'm going to introduce you to two more tortoises that i got two more snow leopards they're in isolation right now just to be safe to make sure that those little guys uh, don't have a, any kind of pathogen that may infect my very happy and healthy group. So in this group, we have 2.4, uh, which means two males to four females. Now, if you heard me say I have 2.4.3, that would mean that I have three at the end of that ratio uh, that are unsexed. So 2.4 means two males to two females. Now, since these guys are from Sub-Saharan Africa, all the way along Africa's, I believe it's East Coast, all the way down through Ethiopia, uh, all the way down to South Africa, they're inhabitants of grasslands. Uh, they can be found in the Serengeti. They can be found anywhere there are grasses and that there are, uh, you know, drier habitats. Now. Another thing that's funny is there have been photos, I've seen photos of leopard tortoises uh, where there is actually some snowfall. So as long as it stays drier than normal or they don't get cold and damp, uh, it does seem that they can be somewhat cold tolerant. But I would say that that's not a common occurrence throughout most of their range. Um, they do get rain in their habitats. They get a rainy season. So they do have to be able to take some moisture. And when they do this, uh, much like sulcata tortoises and other tortoises that kind of rely or live in drier areas, they're gonna drink, 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 drink up as much as they possibly can uh, in order to get them through that dry uh, period. And then they're gonna get preformed water from some of the things they eat. Uh, here, I have a water bowl that I've created, but I've got a little leak. So every night, the water comes on, it fills up, and by the afternoon, it dries out. So as long as these guys get uh, clean, clear water, uh, they'll be okay. Now. What I have here is some cactus, and that's what's gonna give them some moisture. And what I was gonna do is I was gonna cut some of it up while I talk to you about these guys. So why don't I do that? I'll just kind of put you all right here, and I'll go hands-free, and I'll make things a little bit easier for all these guys. I like to give them some cactus, and you just cut it up like this with some kitchen scissors, 
and they really do love it. Watch what happens as we talk, guys. There are gonna be a lot of tortoises coming over here, and so I think you'll see cactus is an amazing uh, treat for these animals, and here in Florida, I'm using what's called nopales. It's a um, spineless prickly pear cactus uh, of the genus Apuntia. So <clears throat> a lot of people ask me the exact species name. I don't know it, but you can find it perhaps in Latin supermarkets. So if you have a Latin supermarket, ask them if they sell cactus pad. Um, it is a really great way to get minerals and moisture into your tortoises. Uh, I'll also feed these tortoises as close to a natural diet as I can. That being said, folks, they do well on Missouri. Uh, they do well on Fluker tortoise diet, which I love. They also do very well on um, certain produces. Now, escarole, romaine, collard greens, uh, those are all pretty good choices, but you don't wanna overdo it with that stuff. The best stuff would be to try and feed these guys mulberry leaves and dandelion greens and a lot of different grasses that might be growing in your yard as long as you don't use chemical fertilizers on that it'll be really cool now there are there used to be in the nomenclature which is the science of taxonomy and naming things but there used to be two separate species of the leopard tortoise uh, they did change the genus. It is now Stigmachelis. Um, what you're looking at are what I call snow leopards. And that's not a species. Oh, we got a tick right there. That's not a species, what it is. Let's see if I can get this tick off. Ticks can't, they don't really hurt the tortoises unless there are hundreds on them. Um, it's just a normal thing to have happen when you have animals living outside. And I've got to kind of get her used to me. And then we got to try and get that tick off. But anyway, these are what I call the snow leopards, and that's because they're very blonde. You can also hear them, these type of tortoises called blonde tortoises, um, you know, high white. But as I like to keep my animals outside, you'll notice that they do get a little bit um, more, I would almost say golden, uh, as far as, you know, their coloration. <clears throat> this is as they get older. Uh, if kept indoors, they'll remain white, uh, but they are definitely lighter than the normal uh, variant of the leopard tortoise, which is Stigmachelis pardalis babcocci. Now, in the past, and I don't know what's going on with the way they're calling things. Hey, what's up, pal? Uh, but there was also Stigmachelis pardalis pardalis. Now, I happen to have some pardalis pardalis that we'll meet here in a little bit. They generally come from southern, uh, the southern range of those. Uh, oh, he's got two. Oh my God, we got to get this. We got to get these. And I don't have my, um, just, just eat. Don't be shy. Keep eating. Oh, I almost had it, guys. There you go. Just, oh God, I almost had it. What a pain in the neck. Literally, pain in his neck, I think. Um, what was I saying? I think I was talking about, there we go, there's one. Let's see if I can get this other one. They're little blood suckers. Little ectoparasites, it happens. And uh, luckily that's why I'm on hand is to get busy with my tortoises and get these guys all cleaned off. Um, now, Pardalis pardalis come from southern the southern portion of their range. They can take cooler temperatures, uh, really, really special tortoise, and actually harder to find in captivity. I did get both ticks by the way. I'm gonna deal with these guys here in a moment. Don't let me forget, I'd like to get rid of these little boogers. Maybe I'll do that right now. In fact, what I can do, quite simply, is chuck them in the pond because some of the cichlids would definitely grab onto them. I've got some carnivores in there see you guys oh they sink up oh, look at the fish getting them already awesome there you go guys nail them Woohoo! recycle baby recycle okay so anyway pardalis pardalis comes from the southern portions of their range uh babcock a little bit more northerly climbs the other thing that i have to tell you guys is that i've seen photos and you can search these photos out of leopard tortoises uh from ethiopia okay that are massive we're talking close to sulcata sizes uh definitely over 100 pounds enormous tortoises so uh they are still classified as 
you know, Stigmacelli's uh, Pardalis, Babcock guy, or Pardalis, Pardalis, um, they are true giants, and it must be a locale issue because the ones I've seen in Sudan uh, photos and the ones in Ethiopia tend to be massive. But because of, you know, them being hunted for food, uh, it's rare to see such large tortoises like that uh, any longer, but they are truly giants. Uh, in that area. Uh, this species can go without water, like I said, for a long time, although you never really want that to happen uh, as it's not a good way to kind of keep them in captivity. Um, when a tortoise goes without water, it's a very stressful situation. I mean, droughts are stressful. So we don't want to put the tortoises through stressful situations. We want to try and keep them in the best possible situation. So don't think that you shouldn't offer your tortoises water. Very, very important. These guys are also very similar to star tortoises in behavior and in diet as well as habitat. So they're they're pretty amazing. Uh, they used to be Gio Cialone, but now they are, oh, I got another tick. Now they are, um, of course, Stigmacellis, Pardalis, Babcocci. Very, very cool. So my snow leopards or blonde leopards are high white. It's not anything other than just a color kind of uh, locale. I'm not sure where they came from as far as this locale, but they truly are incredible. Do you guys want to go meet some uh, more leopard tortoises? Let's go. We're going to wander over here. We don't have to go too far here at Camp Kennan. I did have a large group of what I considered normal uh, leopard tortoises, normal coloration, uh, but they went to a friend of mine, Connor, uh, who is now raising them and getting babies. Um, I wanted to kind of pare down on the leopard tortoises so that I can focus on some other animals here at the camp. That being said, I do in fact really do love the um, the, the leopard tortoises and I, I couldn't you know get rid of these snow leopards. Uh, not to mention they were uh, gifts. I'm trying to kill this thing. <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of this guy. Uh, uh, gross. Oh, all right. Well, there you have it. Now let's go over here. We are of course in with the leprechauns, which Hey, they've got some leopard tortoise in them. Here they are. Here is a leprechauna. So it's kind of interesting that sulcata and leopard tortoises can in fact hybridize. And uh, we talked about that in another video. They do have ranges that will overlap and only nature knows what in fact a species is. But these guys, the leprechauns, they cannot have fertile offspring. Uh, and here is Pardalis Pardalis. Now, she is a bit more blonde, okay, uh, than you would see. I'll show you the male here in a moment. But you can see just the difference in her patterns. That's how you're going to know the difference between Babcocci and the Pardalis Pardalis, which, as I mentioned, scientists are now classifying as one species. So I'm using my historical knowledge, the older... Um, nomenclature of the, the uh, species, um, uh, the genus rather. And um, it's basically a subspecies when you're talking about Pardalis versus Pardalis, Pardalis. Pardalis, Babcocci, Pardalis. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Pardalis pretty much means leopard. It's horrible. There's a lot of Latin flying around here. I wanna try and get this gal to have a nibble on some cactus. We'll just put a little bit right there and see if she comes out of her shell and starts eating it. Uh, the male is floating around somewhere. Let's have a wander. Let's see where he is. These guys love to hide in the grasses because that's what their patterns are designed for. Their patterns are designed to render them somewhat invisible in tall grass, which is pretty much what their habitat consists of. Just a lot of grass that they can hide in. You'll also notice these high dome shells, right? Now scientists have a theory as to why do they have these really prominent uh, domed shells? Well, they live in areas where there are massive land mammals like elephants, and they think that when an elephant puts his little foot down, well, not, not quite so little, puts his foot down, he'll feel this and maybe give the tortoise a break and not completely crush him. Look at this tortoise. Now look at the difference. Let's walk over here and just have a look. Look at all the color 
that is on the Pardalis Pardalis as opposed to the Babcock guy. You can really see a difference, can't you guys? There's not quite as much black on these. Um, there's also, these are from South uh, Africa. So you might also hear them called South African leopard tortoises. Again, can take cooler temperatures, but still you don't want them to get very wet. Um, so this is a really cool tortoise to have. In fact, guys, the price of these animals, the South African leopards, has gone through the roof. Uh, you're looking at close to $5,000 for a male and female. Uh, pretty nuts, if you ask me. But um, hey, whatever. I was very fortunate to get these two. Um, so you have a blonder female and you have this male right here. Now, I haven't witnessed any breeding because uh, usually you need more males than females or rather you need more than one male to stimulate that kind of activity. Um, so I've not seen any breeding between these guys. It would be amazing to get babies of these leopards. Here, he's coming out of his shell. They're beautiful tortoises, very personable when not frightened from being picked up and moved around, uh, but they are great, great animals. So uh, we're learning all about leopards today, man, and I'm really happy that I have the both uh, species or subspecies to show you so you can get an idea of the differences between them. Tell you what, let's go meet our new arrivals right now. Uh, I'm gonna leave some cactus in there for them. And we're gonna wander over here. I actually put them in with Petro and Petra, our rhino iguanas, because there's no chance really for them cross-contaminating each other or hurting each other. Um, so I wanted to keep them in an area that I can get them used to being outdoors because they were actually raised up inside an apartment here in Florida. They're originally from New Jersey and New York. Here is the male. He is beautiful, look at this. And you can see that they were raised up indoors, right? You can see how blonde he looks. Is that beautiful? He's a beautiful boy. Come on over here, fella. So you can now see what it looks like when these guys are not in fact uh, kept outside all the time. Um, so that is the male. He is 25 years old and uh, they call him Pale Rider because uh, he's always mounting the female. It looks like Petro wants a little cactus, which is fine. They can share. I don't mind at all. Uh, but these guys came to me from a nice woman who just could no longer care for them. She watches the channel and wanted them to come here. And like I said, I don't always accept um, adoptions, uh, but if there are certain animals, of course, that I work with already and I have room for and I know are gonna do well, uh, then I will make an exception. Uh, so here is the male. So let's have a look at the female. Now she's a little different. She, she was raised up in New York, uh, originally came from a pet store, but here she is. So her shell is a little bit, um, I would say just a smidge, you know, we've got some uh, MBD issues here from early on after she came to live with the nice person who, um, you know, took care of her, she was put on a proper diet. So as she grew, she got better, but she's a little bit flattened out. And I am noticing uh, that she has a little mobility problems uh, with that right rear leg. Uh, look at how long her claws are. We're gonna wanna trim those down a little bit to help her out and help her get her feet directly under her. So she's been living uh, inside on a concrete patio. So we've gotta really uh, trim these down. So that's something I'm gonna have to do. And I'm gonna have to keep it, what are you doing? You coming to see me? That's okay, you can, you're gonna climb on me, aren't you? Oh my gosh, I love you. Uh, but anyhow, she's a big girl. I believe she's 27 years old. And um, I'm pretty psyched that uh, I've got her. Now she said she's laid eggs before and had fertile eggs. So those two do breed. And um, I'm thinking also there's a possibility that she said she, the woman said she was trying to dig. Maybe she wasn't able to lay her eggs. And so as long as we've got this soil here, maybe we'll see some egg laying here real soon. Uh, I just don't want her to get egg bound. And I may in fact bring her to my buddy, uh, Mike, Dr. Mike Gillen, uh, to see if there's any eggs in here. We'll do an x-ray on her just to see what's going on with that back leg. Always start with an x-ray and work from there. So uh, that's what we're doing. Here they are, beautiful tortoises. I will add them with the main group probably in a month. 
Uh, I want to give these guys some time just to acclimate, to be here. Um, I do have a roof over this enclosure and on the main part of that enclosure, so they're not going to get rained on. I want to kind of break them into being outdoors a little bit easier. It's going to be easier for me to do also in the dry season here in Florida. It is a little bit cooler, but it is also very dry. So that's uh, what we got going on. Pretty excited. It's always nice to have some new arrivals hang out at the camp. And um, man, I can't wait to see how these guys do. So uh, keep coming back, folks. I hope you learned something today about leopard tortoises. I know I kind of ramble. Uh, maybe there's some other questions you might have. Go ahead and leave them in the comments or head on over to patreon.com slash Camp Kennen where you can interact with me once a week on a live video and ask me any question you'd like. Uh, so check that out if you're interested. You also get deals on merchandise and things like that, uh, plus some content you may not normally see on the main channel. Uh, so thank you guys so much. Uh, I forgot her name. I think it's Blondie, to be honest. Yeah, it's Blondie. That's her name. Just like Deborah Harry, man. Good band. Yep. Heart of Glass. Heart of, yeah, Heart of Glass. In a minute, rapture. You know what I mean? Good stuff. All right, people. That's what I got for you today. We got leopard tortoises and rhinos co cohabitating. It's just an incredible situation. Uh, it looks like they want the cactus. That's fine. He's going back to his corner. Me, I'm going inside. I'm going to get some more leftovers, man. I'll be eating leftovers for the next few weeks. Nah, actually, a couple days. But, uh, sweet potato casserole. Woo! My wife makes a mean sweet potato casserole. The marshmallows are my favorite part. Okay, that's it. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. I hope we learned something. Have a great Sunday. See you soon.